Right, you're about to see uh, part one of the 10 basic steps of what it means to be a samurai in historical times and how we can use it today. It's from this book, How to Be a Modern Samurai, and this is straight out of actual history of what actual samurai did and boiled down for you. So let's go, step one. Step one is control your mind. But the first part of this is realign your attention. So normally, it's everything's going on, a bit of this, bit of that, I'm doing that, I'm doing this. You've got to focus, you've got a single thing to achieve. In ancient times, samurai, samurai families mainly had a specialization. They would do many, many things, but they had a specialization. And of course, within the warring periods, most specializations were military based or auxiliary to military. So what you've got to do in your mind is like, what am I setting out to do and do it? So that could be anything. It could literally be starting a new charity. It could be opening a business. No matter what it is, is focus on it. If it's samurai in, um, aimed, then you could be like, okay, I'm going to delve in and find out what the Sengoku period was like, like uh, the Shogun. And he's on his channel. Uh, if you are doing the sword arts, you could be like, right, I'm going to actually go back and find the original sword arts and how they've remained, uh, how they have changed over the years. You could do anything. So you don't have to be a stamp reproduction of everybody else, you know, lined up in Hakama and Kimono. You have to be an individual, but you have to realign your attention. And that doesn't mean you ignore all the other aspects. You pull them in, but they all, like little arrows, go to your single goal. That's the main focus. Part two is go for calm, but you know you'll never achieve it. Basically, you get a lot of like martial artists and people who are like, oh, I'm calm. And they put on a show of being calm. But actually, the moment the summer happens, they're up the wall and they're going mad. So what you have to do is just focus on your own mind, on calming it down and on what you can do a diary of this. Basically, every time something external annoys you, Feel you like why it's annoyed you. Write it down and realise what keeps annoying you. And then put up a shield and barrier and, and really clock for those moments where external things come and disrupt your mind. There's an old ninja saying, basically, or an old ninja lesson, which if you want to twist the mind of an enemy, simply attack what they like. Whatever they like, find it and attack it. Even if you agree with them, just, just don't. Just attack it and, oh, your mind is going mad. You know, don't attack that, which I love. And uh, so what you have to do uh, in samurai training, beyond the martial arts or the history side of it, is literally look out for those little darts or arrows that come from the outside world, that mess with your mind. Once you know what they are, you can identify them, switch them off, move them and carry on. With them. Spend time building up your energy. This is something that a lot of people miss. So, so it's like work, 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 work. You'll just die and tire out. It's simple as that. You'll end up an old man, just dead. So what you have to do is allocate working times or know when you work time, but realise inside when you're like, hold on, I'm starting to fade here. And, 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 and businesses have worked this out. If you give employees a bit of a break, they come back refreshed and do it. Always say this is shutdown time refresh yourself don't try and force yourself through only in an emergency so you must have the reserves to push through an emergency and like just keep going bang 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 till you're almost dead boom 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 but when it's not an emergency you must re have that reserve battery layer behind you just keep topping it up like that so you don't run out of energy the obvious one is preparation be prepared a lot of people don't really do this but even in your everyday life be prepared you can see up there i'm drying mint I've got a wonderful, um, these are wonderful fire starters. They're made of cones and they're covered in wax. I spent a day or half a day um, waxing cones. I'm obviously prepared for winter seasons. Um, everything is set up in this house for preparation. And not only that, when I go to do an event, I prepare myself. When I do anything, you get prepared, you get ready. So just little bits like that will make your life much much easier just be prepared even down to the fact that i have stores of matches at certain places within the house near to candles near to fires where i have to start i don't have to start searching for the matches i bought 100 boxes of matches divided them into sections placed them around the house near where i need them so it never i never struggling to find anything in this house or struggling for things when i go out of course things will interrupt you and move and you'll change you know it will put um a bit of a uh, what's the word i'm looking for a bit of a, a, a side blind or you'll be like all oh, that and you have to react in a different way but on the whole be prepared discover your own breaking point most and sorry not most people everybody has a breaking point the end you will break you will break and um 
know where that is and know the signs of when it's coming so that um, move away from it. So when you feel the breaking point is coming, take a different route, go back, chill out, do something different, make an excuse to leave, whatever you've got to do. When you feel that breaking point is going to come, close it off before you break because you'll know once you've gone, you can do too much damage in a social situation, in a violence situation. You can do, there can be real problems because you've just pushed it over that line. So know when you're going to break, shut it down and move away. Build an escape route. Now, this doesn't mean a literal escape route. It's um, whenever you go to see someone, set up and say, oh, I have to be at this point by this time, uh, but it's flexible. And then when you really have to go, you can say, well, actually, I should really go by now to get it done. Or you can say, oh, it was flexible. I can move it on a bit. So whenever you visit anyone, have an escape route. Uh, allow people an escape route as well. Give them an excuse if they need to leave. Show them. Don't trap people inside something. If there's an argument going on, give them in somebody's back, being backed into a corner. Give them a way out, even if it's slightly wrong gives them a way out of a conversation. We do in Samurai ways, it's maintain Samurai honor for all people because otherwise you end up annoying someone which ends up in conflict. So always in, in life, whenever you're in a building, find an escape route. If you're camping somewhere, find an escape route out of the mountains. Uh, in a conversation, have an escape route. Always be like, where's my escape route? Where's the opposition's escape route? And in that way, when somebody's an enemy, you can give an opposition an escape route, but if they're a true enemy, you can cut them off or give them a fake escape route and then trap them. OK, so really work on this idea of escape routes within your mind, within your strategies, within your tactics. Don't go with modern fashion. Don't go with it. So basically, every time a fashion comes up like the Gangnam Dance or the Macarena or this new sticker collection or this new thing, don't go with it. Interact with things if you think you're going to like them, but only pick things that you will do for most of your life. Don't just randomly go into different things. New fashions, you'll look back at photographs and like, what was I doing? You'll look back at things and be like, that was ridiculous. Now, it doesn't mean you shouldn't try new things. Go on holiday, go you know for a day doing crazy golf or whatever. Have fun, enjoy your life, but don't engage with every new fashion. because So don't live your life year to year, fashion to fashion, and have no you. Like you get these people who just go along in life and it's like all they do is follow the fashions and there's no identity of them. Establish your own identity first, then engage with what you think will be fun for a short amount of time, but only stick to things that are fashion for you. You may have noticed, for those who follow me, I only wear blacks, greys and um, whites, basically. Um, this has got a blue tint to it, but it's a black jumper that looks a little bit blue, but it's, it's pretty much black. Uh, and that, that annoys me that when you buy a jumper and suddenly you're like, it's got that blue highlight to it. And it does annoy me, it's not true black. So uh, basically, find, and as you can see, I have a colour scheme in my house of black, gold and white with obviously equipment in it. So you always keep to a single you and don't engage and don't change for every fashion. Understand that um, your social circle will actually change how you behave. So if you hang around with uh, extreme right-wing people, you'll become more right-wing. If you hang around with extreme lefty people, you become more left-wing. If you basically hang around with thieves, you'll, you'll look to thievery more. If you hang around in sort of like sexual environments, you become more sexually active. If you hang around with more academic people, you become more academic. This is just a, a general truth of life. The people you hang around with give you the balance of who you are. Now, in old samurai literature, this is painting the room red, it's called. So if you paint a room red, everything, no matter what is the table, everything, no matter how best you try and avoid it, you will get red paint on you. The point here is you can't avoid what society washes over you and what your friends wash over you. So pick your friends carefully and pick how much time you spend with them so you don't change the way you think away from what you actually believe. Understand what true honour is. So a lot of the times, and I do see this a lot in samurai um, sort of community, is this idea of honour and idea of, you know, more the stoic, honourable samurai. But often it just becomes theatre and pantomime. And I've seen it many times and it's, and you often find this where the key triggers for these are people will eat slowly in public. If they're forced into a restaurant or they're, they're forced into eat somewhere. I've seen literally people do this. Like I watched somebody once through a window eating an ice cream, just 
chewing through an ice cream just as I knocked on, knocked on. For someone who's superior to me in a martial arts context, they opened the door and they realised they'd been caught out eating an ice cream. So suddenly it was very slow and methodical. Mm, yes, Anthony. Mm. And then Zen lectures came on and they couldn't wait to get rid of this ice cream because they'd been caught out eating like what is basically crap food. Um, or the other one, as you say, is they'll go to a restaurant and order a very, very small, delicate meal and eat it very slowly. But then you, when they're home, they're like scoffing it. This is pantomime honour. True honour is being honest, basically. It's being honest with what you do. If somebody comes and asks you something, tell them the truth. If um, it's a secret, say, I'm sorry, that's a secret. I'm not telling you. Uh, you know what I mean? You don't have to tell everyone everything. Um, say what you mean. Say what you're going to do. Say, I'm going to do this. This is going to happen. And do it. And don't back away from it. And just become renowned for keeping your word or doing your best or making sure you help other people. And bit by bit, people, you don't have to act honourable like in this pantomime-esque way. You just have to be an honourable person. And you have to be steer away from uh, attacking people willy-nilly. Now, that doesn't mean you can't attack enemies. There's a big difference here with... So in Buddhism and in sort of spirituality, you're not meant to attack anyone. But in the samurai way, you're meant to absolutely kill and dest destroy people. So, But that's only people who are your enemy. So if by situation they become your enemy, then uh, honour is not really for them. You go out and you get rid of them. And you, by all means, a deception. The way of warfare is deception. You just crack on, boom, 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 get rid of them. And then... But you don't do anything... Like, then there's a moment beyond that where you don't tarnish the dead's reputation. You don't, like, there's a there's the story, I think, if it's Tokugawa Yasu, I think, and uh, Oda Nobunaga. And when uh, Takeda Katsuyori's head is there, Nobunaga screaming at you're an idiot, <laughs> at this decapitated head. And Tokugawa Yasu sort of, like, you know, gives it praise and he's like, yeah, because you that person's dead now, whether they're an enemy or not, or they've been defeated, you, you know... You give honour to the dead. So there's lots of aspects to honour, but fake honour is what you should avoid. Right, guys, that is the first step in how to be a modern samurai. I've basically just give you the roundup of the first chapter. So get yourself a copy and go along with me in this. Please put your comments below. Um, we'll be doing 10 of these videos to get you through the book. Obviously, there's a lot more in the book, but I'm going to give you the basic backbone so that you guys can actually... Um, you know what I mean, move from this idea of either here or here, bring academic and samurai love together and then move forward. It's actually making it something in your modern life. If you're not trying to, if you're not trying to make samurai part of your modern life, I get it, that's fine. But if you are, then at least really focus and do it. And, and this, by the way, is all from ancient documents. This is not what I think. This is what samurai have actually done. Samurai have actually said and is all there in documentation. So enjoy. Oh,